Please open your Bibles to John chapter 6, the book of John and the 6th chapter in your Schofield Reference Bible, page 1122. We'll be reading verses 5 through 13. The text verse for this morning's message is the 12th verse. Once more, John chapter 6 and in your Schofield Bible, page 1122. Shall we stand, as is our custom to do, for the reading of God's Word? We'll read the verses responsively. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred pennyworth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here, which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number, about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together, and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. And let's pray. To those who are visiting, that was Mrs. Isles and Mrs. Scott, my our daughter, my two daughters, really. And uh, this morning I uh, don't think I'm going to do much real heavy preaching, but I've done a lot of heavy preaching before when I didn't think I was going to do much heavy preaching. But... Uh, I uh, I want to I want to speak this morning on a very unusual subject. God has a doggy bag. God has a doggy bag. Somebody said that I hung in there like a bulldog, and I got that name bulldog. Somebody gave me a, a an apron with a big bulldog on the front of it. I use it often, and uh, but I want to speak this morning on the subject, God has a doggy bag. I want to say this before I read just the text and pray. Not a thing you can do about your life up to now, it's all lived. You can't dedicate yesterday to God. It may be that you have 10,000 yesterdays, but you cannot dedicate those to God. It may be that you have 10,000 tomorrows. You can give those to God. It may be that you have a 1,000 tomorrows. You can give those to God. It may be that you have one tomorrow. You can give that to God. I, my text is that very famous one. When they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. I want to speak today on that little subject, the fragments that remain. I want to use this mic this morning. And let's bow our heads for prayer, please. Our Heavenly Father, I'm so glad that you can use a little bit. I'm encouraged about that little lady that was a widow who gave two mites. When her offering hit the collection plate, it was heard around the world around the centuries. I'm so glad that you could take a little lad with a few loaves and fishes and break those and feed the multitudes. I'm glad that you can take leftovers. Thank you for it. I pray you'd help me this morning to encourage the people to give everything from here on to God. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to encourage your heart this morning. Picture it. 5,000 people have been fed because Jesus broke 
the loaves and fishes of a little boy's lunch basket. I've often said that the greatest children's worker that I've ever known uh, was Andrew. You say, how do you know Andrew was a children's worker? You try taking a boy's lunch from him and see what kind of luck you had. He got this little boy to give up his lunch. And I'm sure that Andrew said, son, if you'll just give me your lunch, Jesus will feed everybody here with it. Yeah, big deal, Andy. Yeah, big deal there, boy, sure. Uh, but he got his lunch basket. Jesus blessed it. When I think about this, I think about the youth conference we had years ago. Uh, we have a summer nationwide youth conference, and we decided to have a meeting out at the college on the college football field. We had 5,000 people. Uh, delegates are, are young people there that year. And uh, uh, we had a sermon and some special music, and then it was time to eat. Ed Lapino was our youth director, and he still is, and, and that's back when Eddie was a young man before he started getting Social Security. But Eddie, um, I lent to, and, and by the way, Jim Wirtz was our junior high youth director, and they were on the platform with me. And I said to those 5,000 folks from all of America, I said, now, yeah, Brother Lapina has, has prepared a meal for all of us. Brother Lapina, would you come please and give us instructions? He stood up and said, Brother Howes, you didn't tell me to prepare me food. Oh, I said, yes, I did. I told you to order enough food to feed these 5,000 people. And he said, you didn't either. I said, Jim Wirtz, didn't I tell Ed Lapina? And by the way, 5,000 folks thought we were having a fuss. And uh, so uh, Jim Wirtz said, no, preacher, you didn't. And I said, yes, I did, too. I said, folks, I apologize because Brother Lapina has not done his job he's supposed to do, and I don't know what to do. I said, does anybody here have any food at all? One of the boys said, I got a lunch here. I said, let me have it, son. And I put my hand on it and prayed. And at that very moment, helicopters dropped food from heaven. And we had hostess Twinkies and, and not, not, not the kind of Twinkies they have in San Francisco, but a hostess Twinkies. And we had, um, we had uh, sandwiches and, and so forth dropped out of heaven. Folks, Jesus is not the only person that fed 5,000 on one little boy's loaves and fishes. But this, this is the story. 5,000 people fed as Jesus broke this boy's lunch and multiplied it and multiplied it and multiplied it. Now, after those 5,000 people are fed, Jesus said to the disciples, Now, go get the fragments that remain. That doesn't make sense to me. They've already eaten. Go get the scraps, is what he's saying. Go get the fragments that remain. Now, I can see them as they go up and through, go in and out. Those 5,000 people, here is an old little piece of bread falling on the ground here. He picks it up. And here's about a half a fish over here. And he picks it up and he puts it in the sack. And the Bible says that they gathered 12 baskets full. I do not know what they did with those baskets full. have no idea in the world. Somebody said that little boy probably got them and took them home. I have no idea whether it or not. But, but at least the thing that I want you to notice is that Jesus was not only interested in feeding the 5,000 people, but he was interested in the fragments that remain. I was in a very fancy restaurant with a preacher friend several months ago. In fact, it's been two or three years ago now. And I was in this, this um, restaurant with this, with this preacher and, and uh, I think maybe his wife and, and, and child. And uh, this very rich-looking couple came over and sat down. It was a very fancy restaurant. I've forgotten the name of it, but it had golden arches over the top. And uh, so we were um, sitting there, and in came in this very wealthy-looking couple. She had on, it was wintertime, she had on a mink coat. I don't mean a mink stole. I mean a mink coat. And uh, she had diamonds, uh, I mean huge diamonds. Obviously, they're very, very wealthy people. They sat there, and they ate. And when they got through eating... She looked up to the, this very rich lady, looked up and said, Could I have a doggy bag? Now, folks, I saw this lady take the butter, the jelly, the silver. No, 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 the butter, the jelly, half a roll, and half a baked potato, and stick it in a sack and take that sack home with her. I mean, though she was obviously, and probably that's the way she got wealthy. But 
but she took home with her the fragments that remained. It was late at night. I was in an eastern city. I was staying in a big hotel. I got home about 11 o'clock, got in my room about 11 o'clock after preaching. I was starving to death. I mean, hungry. I don't think I could have lived another 15 minutes without something to eat. You know how it is. And uh, so, late at night. And I don't, I, I don't know it's you, but, but I can go without breakfast. I can go without lunch. I can go without dinner or, or supper, whichever you prefer. But at 11 o'clock at night, if you're edible, you better run. If I can catch you, I'll kill you and cook you and eat you. I'll tell you for sure. I think you know what I'm talking about. And so, oh, I was hungry. I went to the little coffee shop there, and they just closed. At 11 o'clock, it was about a few minutes past 11. They just closed. I went to the, 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 the desk, and I asked the clerk there at the desk. I said, uh, do you have any snacks? She said, there's a, there's a newsstand. And they serve, uh, have sack snacks there. You can get little uh, fritos and potato chips and pretzels and popcorn and, and candy. And uh, uh, so I went over to get one of each. And I went over. And just as I got there, they closed the door. Well, I went back to the desk and I said, where is the nearest vending machine? She said, three blocks down the street. I said, don't you have a vending machine in this hotel? She said, mister, if we had a vending machine, they would, couldn't sell anything at the, at the little newsstand. I said, but ma'am, what are you going to do about old men who are hungry at 11 o'clock at night? She said, I can't do a thing. I walked down the hallway and I said, dear God, provide me some food. Just, I don't care, I just, I need something to fill up this empty place in my stomach. I don't have as big an empty place as some, but I, uh, I said, just fill up this as some. And, uh, but anyway, I, I, I walking down the hallway, and there it was. God's answer to my prayer. Somebody had ordered room service. And after you order room service, you put your tray out in the hallway beside the door. And there it was, as big as life, God's answer to my prayer. The biggest poppy seed roll you ever saw in your life had not had a bite taken out of it. I looked to the rear. I looked to the front. And then I blew my nose and dropped my handkerchief right there beside this poppy seed roll. I just Realize that Jesus said, gather up the fragments that remain. My mother never threw anything away. We never had anything to throw away. But my mother never threw anything away. Not even a little piece of material of a worn out dress. She'd put it in the drawer of our little, little uh, pump kind of a sewing machine. And then after she had a whole drawer full or several drawers full, She'd make a quilt. She'd take the little remnants, they called it, the little remnants, or fragments, if you please, and she'd make a quilt to keep us warm, the fragments that remain. Jesus had a doggy bag. In the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah was in prison. A black man named ebed Melik got, some, got something and made a little rope-like thing and put down inside the dungeon prison and pull Jeremiah to safety out of the prison. Now, what did he make this rope out of? Did he make it out of the finest of silk? No. What did he make it out of? The Bible says he made it out of cast clouts and rotten rags. All the old cast clouts left over dirty rags and, and, and frayed rags. He got them all and put them together. You see, ladies and gentlemen, God never throws away anything. God's a God of... of uh, of rebuilding, and God's a God of recycling, and God never throws away anything. And so ebed Melik reached down and saved the life, as it were, of Jeremiah, not using silk and satin of the finest of wools or the finest of cotton, but old cast clouts and rotten rags, if you please, the fragments that remain. In Jeremiah chapter 18, you have the story of a man who was a potter. He made a vessel 
The Bible says that vessel became marred in the potter's hands. And uh, the Bible says that he made it again. It was a marred vessel, but he made it again. Now, God's that way. God uses old cast clouts and rotten rags. He uses leftover lives. He uses converted drunks and converted whoremongers and converted dope heads and converted thieves. God uses people who have wasted their life. I'm saying God uses leftovers, if it were, as it were, the fragments that remain. Acts chapter 27 and verse 44. The apostle Paul was on a ship that was shipwrecked. And the Bible says that they, that they couldn't get to shore. But it said that they went, some went, and were saved on broken pieces of the ship. Broken pieces of the ship. There are many, many, of, uh, Christ, many Christians who just, y- your ship is shipwrecked. Your life is ruined. But you, all you got is a bunch of broken pieces. But I got news for you. God uses broken pieces too. And these old broken pieces of this ship were used by, uh, by the Apostle Paul and, and the mariners uh, the, 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 to, to get them safely to shore. The fragments that remain. Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 22 that David conscripted an army of people. David could not get the mighty soldiers, the Green Berets, or the 82nd Airborne Division of that day. Bible says that David got him a fighting unit. And that fighting unit was composed of three Ds. The distressed, those who are distressed, those in debt, and those who are discontented. I asked the fellows while I go in my study, I don't understand why God would use those that were in debt. I, I use those in distress and those discontented. Brother Colson suggested there's no discontentment or distress in the world like being in debt. He ought to know. But, uh, but I'm saying that, that God uh, let in this, this unit that David had, the distressed and the discontented and those in debt. You see, God uses the fragments that remain. In the book of Judges, chapter 20, the Bible tells us about another interesting fighting unit. It was a unit composed of 700 men, and these men were chosen because they were left-handed. But these are not men that were left-handed by nature. These are men that by nature were right-handed, and they hurled with their right hand. They took the spear and hurled the spear with their right hand. They wielded the sword with their right hand. But their right hand or right arm had been wounded in battle, and they could have gotten discharged. But they made a fighting unit out of these 700 men who became left-handed, who learned how to throw with their left hand. I'm saying God uses the fragments that remain. Now, let's say this, and follow me carefully, and no walking around and nobody walking out of the service, please. Listen carefully. My preference for you is that God gets the entire meal of your life. My preference for you is that you, you young people never taste what, a, what alcohol tastes like. My preference for you is that your arm never feels a needle pouring in narcotics. My preference for you is that you never pop a pill or open a beer bottle. My preference for you is that you walk up here on this platform and you get married as clean and pure as you were the day that you were born. That's my preference for you. And by the way, that's what we try to do here. <laughs> we're not trying just to salvage those who wasted their lives. But we're trying to prevent the need of salvage later on. <laughs> now, that's my preference for you. My preference for you is that you give God the entree of your life. My preference for you is that the early part of the meal, you give it to God. So you'll not have to give God the fragments that remain someday. My preference for you is that your childhood be spent for God, that your adolescence be spent for God, that your college days be spent for God. That your young married days be spent for God. That your middle years be spent for God. And my preference for you, not only is that your hors d'oeuvres, but that your entree be spent for God. I'm talking about those active years of life. I'm talking about those middle years of life. And my preference for you is that you may spend your senior years uh, of life. Also, that is one of the best looking pies I've ever seen. A baked apple pie. My preference is that I eat that pie right now. <laughs> now, the simple truth is, the simple truth is, God wants the hors d'oeuvres of your life, God wants the entree of your life, and God wants the dessert of your life. 
He wants the whole meal. Now, if you don't give him a part of it, he wants what's left. If this morning your uh, orders have been taken, if you've not spent your life so far for God, perhaps sin has taken the hors d'oeuvres of your life. <laughs> or the salad, if you please. You're an adult. You, ha- you cannot give him your youth. You've wasted your youth. You've done some things that uh, you wish you could undo. You'd like to burn some bridges. You've got some days and nights you'd like to forget. Well, I've got news. You can't do it. It's all gone. The hors d'oeuvres are gone. But thank God you still got the entree and the dessert left. <laughs> so give him the fragments that remain. If you have, if you have uh, r- remaining, if you have the hors d'oeuvres remaining and the entree remaining and the dessert remaining, let God have it all. <laughs> but if you've already wasted your life and you cannot give God the hors d'oeuvres or the salad, then you just realize that's all behind you. But praise God, God said, don't go away yet. Don't go away yet. I can still use you. Dear Lord, take up the tangled strands that we have wrought in vain, that by the skill of thy dear hands some beauty may remain. <laughs> but you say, Brother Hiles, I'm afraid I, I, I've gone beyond that. I'm in the middle years of my life. I'm in the midst of the entree. In the middle years of my life. Notice this strength, folks. And I've already... Let's see, there's a way into this thing. You can find it faster than I can, Keith. <coughs> it may be that you've already used up. Are you in the midst of the entree? <coughs> You're in middle life. And you've already used it up. And it's all gone and wasted. And all you have is the middle, a part of the middle of your life. God said, don't go away. (coughs) Give me the fragments that remain. Don't go away. Let me have what's left. Ladies and gentlemen, our God deserves every moment of your life. But you cannot go back and relive those teenage years. You can't go back and relive those college years. If you're in the middle of life and you've wasted your life so far, don't throw your hands up in despair. We have a God that has a doggy bag. God said, give me what you have. It just may be that you've gone beyond that. It may be that your life is a life that's been, your middle years are gone. It may be that the hors d'oeuvres of life are behind you and you've not lived for God. It may be that the entree of life likewise is behind you and all you have are the senior years of life. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, what Dr. Jack Hiles thinks. I think the happiest years of life are the senior years of life. Brother, I think the senior years of life are the dessert years. Some of you young whippersnappers feel sorry for us old codgers. Shoot. We wouldn't be as dumb again as you are for anything in the whole wide world. Not as dumb as you. I'm simply saying, okay, you've used up your life, and you're 60 years old or 65 or 70 or 75. Well, bless God, if you've got nothing but the dessert, let Jesus have it. It may be that you've used up most of that. It may be that's all you have left of life. You're in the midst of the dessert of life. Or it just may be that you just got that much left. I don't care what you've got left. Let God have it. The fragments that remain. God wants all of your life, but if God cannot get all of your life, He cannot get that which is past. That's all behind you. Whatever you have left, you would give it on the altar to God and say, Jesus, I'm giving you the fragments that remain. It may be that you've wrecked your life. It just may be. That your life is wrecked and you don't have a sandwich, entree, or salad. It may be that all you have is just a bunch of leftovers. And I'm talking to folks today. That's what you've got. <coughs> Best year's gone. You've wrecked the chances. You've become, life has become so complicated. Like the woman at the well. Married five times and living with the man to whom she was not married at the time. It may be a Mary Magdalene possessed of seven devils. I don't care what it is, brother. If you've got your, uh, your hors d'oeuvres and entree and dessert left, let Jesus have it. 
If you've already used up your, uh, your uh, hors d'oeuvres and all you have is the entree and the dessert, let Jesus have it. If you've used up the entree and the hors d'oeuvres, all you have left is the dessert, let Jesus have it. Or if you've messed up your life so much, that's all you've got left. God said, you bring that to me, I'll use it for my glory. I'm simply saying, gather up the fragments that remain and save the fragments that remain and put them in God's doggy bag. God has a doggy bag. As soon as I clean this pulpit up, the sermon will continue. We'll have just a brief intermission. You can get a Coca-Cola and a hot dog. (laughs) Let me tell you what God can do with your fragment. My my hand. Let me tell you what God can do with those scraps, the fragments that remain. We have a member of our church who sits over here, not here every Sunday, because he's busy serving God. He spent his years of childhood in the iron lung. Doctor said he wouldn't live to be an adolescent. He lived a horrible disease and spent his adolescent years likewise in the iron lung. Doctor said he would die young. Came out of the iron lung, the doctor said, you're a dying man. The doctor still says he's a dying man. A number of years ago, this, this man, a dying man, who walks with a cane about like this, and his hand is twisted, hands are twisted about like that, he came to God and said, Dear God, I don't have how many days I've got. I don't have hors d'oeuvres. They're gone. I don't have an entree. I may not have but a few days, but I'm giving you the fragments that remain. And evangelist Monty Watts, goes up and down the, the streets and lanes and highways and hedges of this country, preaching from the West Coast to the East Coast, from Mexico to Canada, the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ hobbling on a cane with a twisted hand. And today his hands are so broken out, you wouldn't believe what kind of hands they look like. But bless God, our God has a doggy bag. I'll tell you what God can do. Sitting in the choir, and I won't go into the story again, is my sister at the age of 45. Didn't know how many years she had left, and a whole rug of life was pulled out from under her. But God has a doggy bag. And she gave gave God whatever years of life she had left. And now for these years, she's been a trusted servant of God, faithful member of the staff and faculty of the Howells Anderson College. Hallelujah, brother. When Hollywood doesn't want you... When the, when the men have been buying your body don't want you anymore, when this old world doesn't want you, bless God, Jesus said, jump in my doggy bag. <laughs> Sitting back there this morning, a little lady been fighting to live, Ms. Evans, fighting to live for years. Living on borrowed time. We think she's going to live forever. The Bible says the wicked never die young. She'll probably preach my funeral. If she stays in the ministry very long. But I'm saying that, that they gave her up. She gave herself up. She planned her own funeral. But she, and and they, everybody showed up, but she, the corpse didn't show up. How many days she's got left? We don't know. But I'll tell you what she does. She goes up and down this country speaking to ladies' groups. She publishes a Christian newspaper. She teaches a class at Howells Anderson College. I'm simply saying, hallelujah, God has a donkey bag. I said, God has a doggy bag. Give God what you have left. Dear Lord, take up the tangled strands that we have wrought in vain, that by the skill of thy dear hands some beauty may remain. You know what this church is? This church is a collection of the distressed. The distressed? What's the other? No, not indebted. The other one. Discontented and indebted. I, I was telling the fellow this morning, Brother, if being in debt... If folks in debt make a good army, this church could win World War III. I'm saying, God has a doggy bag. Man stood right behind this pulpit, dying with cancer, in the hospital in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I invited him to speak at pastor school, but he became so ill, he went to the hospital to die. Had an oxygen tank there at the hospital. That man with 105 temperature escaped the hospital and stole the oxygen tank 
took you to the airport, caught an airplane, stood right behind this pulpit, 105 degree temperature, dying with cancer. Doctors gave him up for dead and preached with an oxygen tank right in front of him behind this pulpit. And 57 men and boys surrendered their life to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. He took that oxygen tank, went around this country preaching. He didn't live very long, but bless God, God has a doggy bag. Pastor school about five, six years ago. I got a call just before pastor school. <coughs> Dr. Curtis Hudson was supposed to speak in pastor school. He said, Brother Hiles, I can't come. I'm shaken up. I said, why? He said, I went to my, bro my brother's funeral. He died with prostate cancer. I think he said his brother, his dad, I think it's me both. And he said, my wife talked me into having a physical examination. And they just found out that I have prostate cancer. Now, Dr. Hiles, I, I don't feel bad. I feel good, but I, 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 I'm emotionally shook up. I can't preach for you. Dr. Hudson lived about three or four years, about four years after that. What a ministry he had. Up and down this country, taking the leftovers, taking the fragments, just a few years of life. And while he was on his deathbed, they said he preached up a storm. I'm trying to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I wish that every one of you had lived for God from your youth. I wish that every one of us could say, I've never taken a drink. I've never rustled an unholy skirt. I've never had a, a, a bit of a dope. I've never had a needle in my veins. I've never said a curse word. I've never lived a, a, a day outside the will of God. But all of us can't say that. But praise God, everybody here has from here on left. Pick up those fragments that remain. If you've got the hors d'oeuvres, the entree, and the dessert, give it all to God. If the hors d'oeuvres are gone, all you have is the entree and the dessert, give it to God. If half of the entree is gone, you're right in the middle of your life, give what you've got left to God. If the hors d'oeuvres and the entree are both gone, all you've got is that little the last part of your life, that little dessert, give it to God. If the dessert's almost gone, all you've got is a few crumbs left, give it to God. God has a doggy bag. It's an old story. I love it. I was, I was out in California. Dr. Larry Chapel said, Dr. Hiles, I want to tell you a story you don't know about. I said, what is it? He said, I know a missionary that's up in years, senior citizen, has spent his, <coughs> spent his life in the jungles of the backwoods of the Philippines, Way back, listen to me, way back in the jungle. Listen to me, back in the jungles where uncivilized people live. Spent his life there. Almost over a third of a century, probably, probably a half a century. And all of a sudden, after all those years in the, in the Philippine jungles, his wife said, I'm sick and tired of it. I don't want to be a missionary's wife. I don't want to be your wife. His wife of decades divorced him. This old missionary was broken. Larry, uh, Larry Chapel kept talking. But broken. I came back to the States. Left the mission field. He had some business one day in Chicago. One weekend in Chicago. He had heard about First Baptist Church. Wife had divorced him. Life was gone. Mission work all behind him. Just a few years left. He happened to come out to First Baptist Church because he had heard about First Baptist Church. And Larry Chapel continued talking. He said he came and sat way back in the balcony, up in the corner somewhere. He said, Dr. Hiles, he decided to come back the next Sunday. He said, you didn't know he was there, but he said, step by step and carefully, you rebuilt that man's life. He said, for one year, the old missionary kept coming to your church every Sunday. You never knew he was there. You never met him. Nobody even knew him. He just sat back in the corner somewhere, and you rebuilt his life. One day that old missionary came to, our, came to meet me and he said, Brother Hiles, I'm going back to the Philippines to give God what for years I have left. This morning that senior citizen is in the jungles of the Philippines, single, without a wife, without a family, living out what little fragments that remain that he has, but he's giving them all to God. I don't know where you are this morning. It may be that you have a, a, a whole life ahead of you. Don't forget the song a while ago. By and by, when I look on his face, I'll wish I'd given him more. More, more. I'll wish I'd given him more. This morning, God can use you. 
And can use your best if you have the hors d'oeuvres, the entree, and the dessert all to give him. But brother, if you've got one little crumb left of the dessert, that's all you got left, God can still use you. God has a doggy bag. Why don't you put your life in it today? I can still see that lady over there putting the butter, all oh, little patties of butter, in a sack with a diamond studded hand and holding that sack of butter and jelly. And she took all the sugar and the equal and the sweet and low. She held that against her mink coat that she had bought selling leftovers probably. Out the door. Fragments that remain. I dropped my handkerchief again. There's some butter on that tray too. It's a kind it was wrapped. It wasn't just have a little paper on top, bottom paper on top. It was wrapped. I'd heard about that scripture. Cast your bread on the waters. It'll return after many days. The old black preacher said, cast your bread on the waters and it'll return buttered after many days. So I dropped my handkerchief again. Picked up the butter. You know, I never enjoyed a roll in my life like I enjoyed that roll. Of course, I have AIDS now, but... I want to say this morning, I thank God that God has a doggy bag. And whatever you've got left, if it's a whole life, if you have the hors d'oeuvres, the entree, and the dessert, let him have it. But if you've used up your youth and wasted your youth like the prodigal son, the heavenly father's looking down the road just like a daddy was. He's got the fatted calf already put on the fire. He's got a suit of clothes your size and a ring that'll fit your finger and shoes that'll fit your feet. Come on back to God and let God have the rest of your life. If you've wrecked all of your life, or if disease has wrecked your body by pain, you wonder how many days you have left. If you've got a hundred years left, you let God have every day. If you've got a thousand days left, you let God have every day. If you've got 365 days left, you let God have every day. If you've got 30 minutes left, you let God have 30 minutes. Hallelujah. God has a doggy bag. Our Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father.